Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, uh, thank you for being here. I am grateful that the fiscal year 23 budget request includes $3.2 billion in discretionary resources for state and local grants, in addition to funds to support law enforcement, crime prevention, and community violence intervention. Uh, as you know, I helped secure $5 million in the fiscal year 22 omnibus for a new grant program to go to community-based organizations and civil rights groups who are providing services to victims of hate crimes. These organizations are working at the local level to prevent and counter the proliferation of hate crimes and bias incidents. Over the past few years of the pandemic, the critical work of local organizations in helping prevent hate crimes and assist those left in their wake have been pr proven repeatedly in my district. Um, I'm concerned that we are not engaging community organizations and local efforts in the administration of these larger grant programs to prevent violence and crime. Are there ways that we can ensure that community-based organizations have equitable access to the discretionary grants that Department of Justice administers? And where are areas that it can improve collaboration with community-based organizations? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. And thank you for um, the legislation, um, which we are very much supportive of. So we are asking for $20 million in Office of Justice Program grants, um, um, which would go to state and local law enforcement, but also to community uh, organizations uh, for the investigation and prosecution and for community engagement and outreach, uh, which I take it are some of the things that you're talking about. For example, uh, providing state hotlines for uh, uh, hate crimes uh, and hate incidents. So this, uh, this general concept is included um, in the money that uh, we're requesting for grants. Thank you. And if there are any ways that our office can be uh, helpful in reaching out to even more uh, community-based organizations, um, please let me know. Um, the other question I have uh, it's about an issue that I've been working on um, for many years. It's the issue of period poverty or lack of access to affordable menstrual products. An opinion piece published in the Washington Post last month highlighted some horrifying stories of incarcerated women being forced to trade favors with the guards in exchange for menstrual products and stories of prison staff withholding products as a form of intimidation or punishment in state and local facilities. Not only are these reports damning, it is completely unacceptable that such practices occur uh, in our carceral system. No one should face abuse in order to access a basic necessity. Uh, I know the special litigation section of your department has investigated a few facilities for violating the civil rights of incarcerated women under the Civil Rights of Institutionalized Persons Act. Um, are there additional resources needed to support the work of the special litigation section or the division on civil rights uh, to ensure that we are protecting uh, their civil rights? So if I can talk separately about the federal side of this with respect to Bureau of Prisons and, and then with respect to the state and local side on, on the federal side, um, there is a statute which, um, which requires um, uh, provision of free um, uh, female hygiene products and BOP endeavors to, to do that. There are site visits to ensure um, that that is occurring. Um, on the uh, side, the other side that you, you began to talk, talk about in the second half of your question about the Institutionalized Persons Act, that is a uh, object of focus of the Civil Rights Division. Um, and so the 32.4% increase in funds that we've requested for the Civil Rights Division would enable resources to go across the board for the division, but including uh, in the area that you're talking about. Um, okay, thank you, I yield back. At this 